Well, let's make a start. This is a half hour webinar, so we're going to be uh, sharp and to the point. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is not Sharon Ninji. My name is Jonathan Mayles, although I'm very glad, Sharon, that you're on the call. Um, along with Catherine Bond, we'll be running the webinar this afternoon. And on behalf of Metsana Partners, I'm really delighted to welcome such a wide range of people. Uh, we've got uh, some people from the US. So Joel, welcome aboard. We've got people from across Europe and the UK. Uh, and as you'd expect from Metsana Partners, we've got people from all walks of life, from high performance Paralympic sport to finance companies, to law firms, construction companies, uh, and all sorts. So really good to have a range of you on the course, on the, on the call today. So what we're talking about today, the leadership challenges of a COVID world. Um, many of you will have heard the acronym VUCA, Volatile, Uncertain, Complex and Ambiguous. Uh, and if you've ever wondered what VUCA means, uh, look out your window right now or look on the internet or look in the paper. Uh, that's the world we've been living in. Uh, it's actually the world we've been living in for quite some time. Uh, but in the last six months with COVID, uh, COVID's like a stain on a microscope slide. It's revealed all these issues and factors and dynamics that were there before, uh, but it's exaggerated them and made them very, very visible for us all. So today we're going to talk about how these VUCA conditions show up for leaders, uh, what the challenges are for leaders and touch on how leaders need to respond. And we also want to share how we can help you and your leaders navigate the, the world we're in. Uh, in particular over the short term, over these next three, six, nine, 12 months, which we feel are really critical for, for every organisation out there. So uh, let's understand what this really means you know, to, to bring this thing to life. Look, you know, if you look in the paper today, uh, all sorts of news about China, Russia, it feels to me like global tensions are quite high, higher than they've been for a long time. Uh, big questions about the economic downturn. Is it, a, you know, we all know that it's, uh, we're heading into a recession. If it's worse, we become a deep depression. Um, what's that going to hold for us in the future? Uh, if you're in the UK or Europe, what's post Brexit going to look like? Once we hit December 30th or January the 1st, we're going to be in a different world there. And to be honest, I don't think we really know what that's going to mean. Um, legislation and guidance is changing so fast. At least here in the UK, it seems like every week there's a new set of rules to work to. Uh, a lot of local authorities are getting new powers. It's changing fast. Uh, makes it very difficult to do business when the, that framework is shifting so fast. Um, we've got this phenomenon now of unpredictable lockdown bubbles. So Melbourne is locked down. Here in the UK, Leicester is closed down. Uh, whether we go back to a full lockdown or not, certainly from region to region, uh, we're going to have different responses, which will have an impact on business and, and on people. Um, for sport, you know, how will the Olympics or Paralympics go ahead? So Ian, you're on the call. I'm sure you've got a nightmare at the moment trying to prepare for Tokyo. Absolute nightmare. I do not envy you at all in trying to work out the logistics of that right now. Uh, we've seen major shifts in how we all spend money and what we do. Now the high street was in trouble before COVID. Uh, whether it will ever recover afterwards remains to be seen. Uh, remote working is here to stay. You know, I don't think we're ever going to see full offices in the future. You know, a lot of the myths about home working have been busted wide open. So what will the offices of the future look like? We, we don't know yet. Um, new technology coming in. Uh, there was an article this week I saw about hydrogen fuel, for example. Uh, it's got the potential to transform how we work. The UK is brilliantly positioned to make the most of that or not. So many other things to deal with. Uh, the impact of Black Lives Matter, real sense of increased social unrest at the moment. Gosh, I wouldn't like to be living in Portland, Oregon at the moment, or any big US cities at the moment, where there's that seems to be a real sense of, of, of unease and, and things changing fast, and a greater accountability for us to, to address and lean into some of these issues of inequality and race. And then the big one, the climate crisis. Crikey, we've been talking about COVID for six months, and we've got the climate crisis looming at it as well. What's that going to mean for how we work, how our supply chains work, for our very license to trade? You know, if you're in a business that deals with fossil fuels right now, where are your investors going and what, what's your actual license to do business? So big, big challenges ahead. Um, and as leaders, what do, we, what do we do with that? Well, 
our proposition is that we are moving into new worlds, not, not a new world singular, but a new world plural, because it will vary depending on our organisation and our context. We do know that there's no return to normal. So please let's go, let's let go of this idea of oh, one day we can go back to what we were. No, we're not going there. We're going somewhere different. And the approach that got you here may not be the approach that gets you any further. And that's a really key point. This is a time for reinvention, reskilling, retooling, because we're moving into new worlds which require new skills and new ways of working. To, to simplify this and to try and help us all make sense of that, we've identified four key challenges which we think leaders need to face and the capabilities that you need to meet them. So we're going to look at what they are now. So the four key challenges that we think um, we're, we're facing as leaders over the, the coming months, if not years, um, th th I'll highlight these in a minute, th they're not exhaustive and, and you may want to, uh, as we go through the next 20 minutes, think about you know, what, what are any additional challenges that you're facing or your sector is, is facing. But, but based on conversations and work we've, we've been doing with uh, leaders and leadership teams over the last couple of months, these are what we see emerging and, and likely to be uh, in our uh, landscape for the foreseeable future. So number one is, is how we create safety and maintain that sense of safety, connectedness and motivation in those that we lead. That's our number one challenge, which I think people are feeling really keenly right now. Uh, number two is how do we not just maintain or, or, or regain, but improve the performance of a dispersed team where people are likely to be working in multiple locations and different environments over the coming months. Number three, how do we navigate um, and, and make decisions and steer our people and organisations through a VUCA era where things are complex, they're no longer simple or complicated, linear, but they are really complex, interconnected uh, issues um, uh, to, to deal with and decisions to make. And number four, how do we lead, um, lead the change that we need to reinvent what we do and how we do it? And how do we lead others um, to adapt um, over the coming months and years? So let's consider each in turn. Um, the first one is really key right now, I think. Um, there was a really good article published just today in The Guardian. I've put the reference there um, in case you want to follow up, but it gave some really compelling stats about how people are feeling right now. You know, there's a really real, um, very real and very uh, you know, certainly perceived sense of threat, risk, uncertainty, instability, vulnerability that people are feeling right now. People are concerned clearly for you know, their, their own and loved ones, health, well-being. They're concerned about the economic and, and financial stability for themselves and, and their family and friends. Um, and they're concerned about the kind of long-term prospects economically. Uh, and as Jonathan pointed out, you know, there are more kind of you know, bigger things, bigger shifts, unrest happening across the world. And um, there's a sense people are kind of thinking big picture and long term. Um, we're seeing higher anxiety that the Guardian article really speaks to that. It, it's shown one of the, the really increased levels of, of anxiety and, and concern, worry that people have right now. And that's likely to continue over the foreseeable future. So, you know, I think as, as leaders, um, we need to be really aware of that. And from a performance point of view, we know that when people don't feel safe, when they feel more anxious, more stressed, that has an impact on their performance, on their motivation. So, you know, even from a, you know, from a performance point of view as well, from a, a people and well-being point of view, we need, to, we need to take this seriously and we need to be ready to lead and support people um, in this regard over the coming months. Um, so, you know, whatever way you look at it, uh, I think, you know, we're, we're looking here at kind of a, a skill set and capability where, you know, we, we are, you know, we're, we're, if not expert, but we're certainly really in tune with how people are feeling um, and understand the diversity and individuality of how people are feeling. People are having kind of real uh, different responses, polarities in, in responses. We need to be able to understand that and work with that. We need to be able to create as much safety, both kind of practically and psychologically as possible, particularly with some kind of you know, partial return to the office and fluctuation uh, therein over the next coming months. 
and we need to know how to support and manage people with those very different needs and responses and how to optimize their motivation productivity and performance so those are some of the kind of really key um, challenges and I, I think just a kind of a, a, a question to ask you if you listen to this is how, how expert are you at this right now so if you were to kind of check in and give yourself a, a score on how well you're doing against this or how confident you feel around leading people around kind of psychological safety uh, well-being motivation wh where are you the second challenge is around um, not just maintaining, but improving the performance of uh, dispersed teams. So, you know, it's really clear that for the foreseeable future, we won't have everybody in one place or in a kind of normal pattern of disbursement that, that, that we had six months ago. Um, and if we think about lockdown, there was, although there was, you know, rapid change we needed to adapt to as leaders, there was a relative simplicity to this. Everybody was, you know, largely working from home, dependent on the sector that, that, that you're in. Um, everybody was working remotely. So our job was really to kind of create connectedness um, amongst a team of people working in, uh, in relative isolation. Um, now we're going to have some people back in the office or the workplace, some people still working at home and some change, some, some change to the balance of personnel and office versus home and potentially we might be affected with, as Jonathan said, more lockdown periods where we all need to go back to work at home. So suddenly we're, we're faced with um, leading dispersed and changeable teams as well, um, which is a whole new challenge for us as leaders. Um, so, you know, I think, um, you know, a few things to consider here. Um, so, so one of the things clearly is, um, you know, pe people have had you know, different experiences, different responses, and, and clearly then different kind of ongoing attitudes um, to, to remote working or non-office working. Um, yeah, it, that will depend on their personal circumstances. It might depend on you know, how successful they've, um, you know, history of remote working or how they've found uh, working remotely over the last few months. Uh, to a degree, it, it, it uh, depends on personality preference and also their, their capacity and skill in managing boundaries between work and home, screen time, isolation, and so on. As a leader, it presents challenges because look, it's harder to communicate, to give feedback and to actually visibly you know, see how people are doing, monitor performance. And we know that's been a challenge for, for certain, certain leaders that like to be in, in amongst their team and, and see what's happening. Um, it's more challenging clearly to build connectedness in a more dispersed team. You've got the risk that you've got some people in the office who are communicating, going back to having those kind of uh, you know, constant conversations and, and there's a sense of uh, connectedness with those in the office. And then the risk is people in your team but working from home feel even more isolated and you've got to manage that. And as a leader, it's really hard, and, and I think we've all experienced this, to really truly understand how people are feeling and coping. We rely on them telling us rather than us being able to, to see and sense it. Um, so, you know, some really you know, key challenges. So I think as a leader, the kinds of things that we're going to need to, to get really skilled at is, you know, first you're kind of creating a, a, a really inclusive and connected culture for everybody in the team, no matter where they are. Um, we're going to need to be you know, even more adept. We've all you know, had a fast track in using Zoom and Teams and, and running, running you know, workshops and meetings and so on but, uh, over the last few months, but we're going to need to be even more adept at running those kind of virtual meetings and workshops and using you know, more, more diverse and innovative technology to assist us in that. Um, we will probably need to you know really kind of filter out what's the the stuff that we need to do as premium in in person time so you know one of the key things and i was on a, a call with um, some clients earlier today where they were working out what's the absolute you know the must um the, the must have uh, activities where we need to be in one place so what are those kind of key activities where really being in one place is, is an essential or absolute delivers performance benefits and we need to be you know clearly experts in um, in support not just managing our own personal energy and well-being but supporting people to do that and that's in the context of a you know, coming month where you know, potentially people are feeling more anxious 
So again, just have a check in. How, how are you doing on this right now? How does that feel? Where, where's your kind of expertise in, in this uh, right now? We'll run back on that at the end. So the third area we were talking about are, are navigating these complex problems. And there's a big list I ran through uh, at the start. If we put all those issues into a bucket, we know they're complex. They're interdependent, uh, they're emergent, they're not static issues. Uh, a lot of them are outside our known parameters. Uh, they're emotionally challenging because we don't know. Uh, and, and there aren't always best practices we can, we, we can fall back on. So as leaders, we've got to respond differently. Uh, you know, we need leaders here who have got a, a greater tolerance of ambiguity. And this is a key point here. The biggest challenge for leaders facing these problems is how you manage yourself and your own capacity to manage your own emotions here. Because the things that we'll get wrong will, be, will come from acting too fast and acting from our own emotional needs for certainty or clarity or to reduce our own anxiety. So as leaders, you've got to develop that capacity to manage your own emotions first in order to keep your head clear to think straight and to communicate properly with others. So I think that's a real number one here. Uh, there are other things as well. A willingness to experiment becomes really important to, to learn how to work through these, these sorts of issues. Um, there is a, a sense of being able to include different perspectives, being able to take different points into view, to be able to think flexibly around an issue, not just look at it from your own point of view. Uh, the ability to transcend opposing positions we're increasingly living in a polarised world where we're getting stuck in these dynamics between uh, my view and your view, between black and white, between Brexit and, 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 and lead. And as leaders, we've got to develop the capacity to move beyond that kind of polarity of thinking. We've got to look for, for different ways and develop the skills to come up with new ways and new solutions. Uh, we've got to get good at thinking short and long term and being able to stretch out a time horizon. And we've got to get much better at being creative and innovative. We think a really good way of, of, of framing this challenge is to think about the different leadership archetypes you need to assemble within your team, because this is more than one person can do. Uh, but we need people who can access their capacity to coach and look after people, just as much as you need people who can explore and take action and move into the future. You need people with the capacity to look after the practice how, practicalities and keep things safe, as well as people who can agitate and invent. Uh, and, and you know, within your team, can you see people who, who can anchor each of these different polarities, each of these different archetypes? Because it's really important you can have that within your team. Then the big question, really, the most complex question of all, I think, is probably how do you reinvent your business? You know, how do you seize the moment to reconnect with your purpose, to reimagine the future and reinvent how you can create value for your customers and employees alike? Because this is a moment where if you're not doing this, you're probably missing a trick. Because if we're not going back to normal and we're going to something new, your business needs to be different as well. There needs to be some level of reinvention. Uh, and what that means, if we go into a little bit of the detail of this, um, it's really important, I think, to recognise that this is about fast change and it's people and organisations. And it's time to really to revisit and to check out what is your purpose and what is your contribution? And then how do you pivot with that? And I use the word pivot really carefully here. If, if you think about basketball, the pivot in basketball, the fast change of direction. The player who's pivoting keeps one foot still and anchored to the ground and then moves with the other and, and shifts fast and that sets up the new direction. And that's a beautiful metaphor for what you need to do now. It's not about taking a jump into the unknown. It's about pivoting. You're keeping something stable. You're keeping one foot where you know what to do. And with the other foot, you're using that to, to lead into a new direction. Uh, so something to think about. And again, this point about purpose and contribution, not just profit. People, you know, people are really thinking about who they want to work with, where they want to work, what sort of products they want to buy. Uh, and this is coming through far more and more meaningfully now for more people. Within the change, within making these changes, uh, we're seeing that leaders and teams are going to be the critical leaders for change here. 
Uh, if you focus just on individuals changing, it's going to be too slow. If you try and change your whole organisation at once, uh, that can be pretty cumbersome. The teams are a really good model, a really good lever, a really good unit for making change. Uh, and within that, developing an agile mindset and culture. And we don't mean agile in, in the software development term, although that's, that's a good technology, but in the ability to actually learn fast and adapt fast, going back to the individual's ability to pivot, as well as how you can pivot as an organisation. So there is some thoughts about making this fast change and reinventing where you are now. Uh, Catherine, if you, you're still there. Yep. Oh, Catherine seems to have frozen or is it me who's frozen? Catherine, are you there? Can you me? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, far away. No, we had a little, little tech, uh, tech glitch. Sorry, I, I think it's my, my internet, yeah. So I'll press on. Um, so um, what we'd like to do is just kind of... Uh, uh, ...respond to four, four questions. Um, which and which are the biggest gaps across your leadership community? And launch this poll. So if you just all respond to the questions on your screen now. That's great. I can see some results coming in. Fantastic. Another, another 30 seconds to finish that up and I'll share with you the, uh, the data. Okay, so I'll end it right there. I'm going to share results. So um, Hopefully you can, you can see those on your screen. So the number one uh, challenge for um, over half of you right now is around uh, maintaining psychological and practical safety and motivation. Um, okay, interesting. So over the next six months, navigating complex problems and reinventing your business are the two uh, key ones. Uh, reinventing your business. Uh, we ran this on Tuesday. It was the same same response. It's the one that you uh, feel least prepared for. And the biggest gap, similarly across your leadership team, uh, leadership community, is is in the capacity to 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 reinvent. Fantastic. Um, if there's anything else um, that is um, kind of keeping you awake at night, any other challenges uh, that you're facing right now, please do put in the chat box. We'd be really interested. Um, to, to hear about those. Um, so um, hopefully that's given you some good food for thought about how you, um, you know, the challenges, but also how you may need to flex and adapt your leadership styles over the month, month ahead. Um, and I think as Jonathan said at the start, it's clear that, that what worked before 
may not work now um, and that there's, there's um, a shift required for, for many of us as leaders. Um, now we've already been working, uh, we started working with leaders and leadership teams over the, the uh, last uh, couple of months to help them uh, develop their capacity to lead uh, in this uh, VUCA world. Um, we've had some really good feedback and have enjoyed um, co-creating uh, and evolving this with clients. So we have actually decided to launch a, a program available to all our clients in a kind of open forum. So just to share a bit of details, I know we'll follow up and, and just share more details um, for you to pick up on if you're interested. So it's a four month uh, virtual program. I'm going to start at probably late September, early, early October. We've kept the cost as low as possible to keep it, um, to make it as accessible um, for, for everybody. Budgets are, are tight. Um, and the four strands, in each strand uh, speaks to one of these four leadership challenges. Um, so module one is about leading remotely. So we're gonna help you understand how to create psychological safety, lead and support people with different emotional needs and responses and cover some really key fundamentals of leading people um, in dispersed locations. Um, second module is around building high performing remote teams. So again, help you understand and build capacity to, um, to, to, to put together um, uh, high performing teams in this VUCA world we need to be able to be agile and pivot quickly so the ability to put together um, uh, teams at pace as well as clearly um, improve the performance of existing teams will be paramount so we're going to support you to do that in module two. Module three is around leading through complexity so diving deep into understanding uh, the nature of that more complex and uncertain world and how to lead, communicate, make decisions in, in, in that kind of context. And the fourth module is on that reimagining re the future. Um, so what you do, how you do it, taking, taking a focus both at organisational level, but also helping you develop your capacity, as Jonathan talked about there, to kind of really explore polarities, work with different polarities and perspectives um, um, at a more personal level. Um, we have an open program. Um, you can take one module if you wish for that, but we have a, a full program uh, where you also get a designated coach for the for the four months. Um, off the back of every workshop, um, you know, there is there's real focus on tangibility on building capacity. So it's not just conceptual. Um, so you'll identify some a, a key leadership behaviour. Um, that you're going to work on and you'll work with your coach over the following three weeks. Um, so you're going to get tracked through and supported by a coach and uh, you'll have a follow-up kind of final uh, reflection and planning and next steps session with your coach. Um, the other kind of key thing, certainly for the open program, is you'll be on this journey with um, leaders from other businesses and sectors. So there's a, a richness to that learning experience. Um, and and you know, clearly, if, um, you know, there's the option of a, a, an in-house bespoke option where we can tailor it um, to you. And we're already running some of these with some of our clients. Um, very happy to chat more. We'd be delighted to chat more, um, and I'll send out some more. We'll send out some more info, um, and please do pick up with us if you're interested in that. And I think, um, irrespective of, of, of if this if this floats your boat and you're interested in that, I think just really our, our kind of final thought really is, um, you know, we are in a different world. We are heading into a you know probably a um, a, a VUCA world, no return to normal, and, and an evolving world for the foreseeable future. So we really want to challenge you. Kind of, it, it does your does the leadership uh, approach that you've used um, in a more stable non-VUCA world is that going to be fit for the future? Mm. Are you going to be ready for the challenges that you face? And, and Catherine, just to add one, just to reinforce the point that what we're really seeing is important now is how much value people are getting from learning from other organizations uh, and how easy that is to do in the virtual world. Uh, you know, the, one of the benefits I think is we can get people from all around the world together for two hours. And uh, you know, I think I'm personally very excited about the community that can be built here. You know, that you can be part of a leadership community for four months, sharing experience right across the world from different companies um, and learning together. You know, as you said, this, these are challenging times, but 
I think through that sense of collaboration that we can develop now online, then uh, uh, there's going to be huge assets to, be, to being part of this journey with others over the four months. Super. Listen, thank you very much. That's just um, half, half an hour, half past four, just over half past four. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll stay on the line if anybody wants to um, ask any questions or um, discuss anything in more detail, um, please feel free. But otherwise, um, thank you for uh, joining us and have a great rest of the day.